Why don't we get to some FinApps capabilities? So I'm learning a lot about FinApps these days. So we talked a little bit about cost allocation. What, what are the top critical, again, capabilities uh, clients should think about? You mentioned showback, forecasting, budget management. There is a lot to understand for those who will be implementing. So any critical, any critical capabilities business and technical leaders need to know about? Yeah, I, I think showback is so important because over and over like as we are working with customers we look at the environment resources that are not tagged the right way or they're tagged one way in one environment another way in another environment and uh, and most of the time companies just just don't have a handle on like how uh, how is how are they spending their money on cloud right uh, to me the showback is the starting point. This is where we get a lot of aha moments when we're working with customers. Sometime, you know, I, I've been on calls where like customers like, oh my God, this was a test environment. We're supposed to kill it a while back, right? It's still here. And, uh, and yeah, there, we see a lot of those scenarios. So that's why showback you know, especially if you do it right with tool, like we make it super easy in NOS where we try to allocate everything in one bucket. And when you go through that exercise, you find so many resources uh, that maybe you forgot to shut down or they belong in a different category. Uh, and uh, so I, I think it's, I mean, I, I would say, like I highly recommend everyone to like build sort of a showback um, type of strategy in their in their organization. Excellent. And uh, you know what I love discussing with uh, with my guests here is the future. Okay. We talked a lot about practical advices for organizations, for technology and business leaders here. FinApps, as you mentioned, is getting more and more prevalent this year. But where do you think this will go in five years? Okay. Can we play a little bit of visionary card? You know, where do you see maybe machine learning, AI helping more to automate some of the practices? So let's just paint that picture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I hope so. Uh, I think, you know, yeah, fast forward five years, like I do see a lot more ML and AI uh, just leverage looking at the usage pattern and uh, and then making recommendations. And then, you know, where we spend a lot of time is like, yes, machine learning could maybe uh, make the recommendations based on the usage pattern. How do you take action? That's, that's the hardest part. Uh, how, do you, how do you build an experience where there are checks and balances before you know, the recommendations get approved? Uh, for example, uh, our, our Kubernetes integration, we, we send a pull request and uh, in the pull request, customer customer could uh, approve the pull request, uh, a developer could approve the pull request or reject the pull request, right? Uh, that way, uh, they decide if they they like the recommendations or or not. Uh, I I see that's where we're heading. You know, going more to developer first experience, sending engineers the the pull request and the recommendations. And that way, you know, we are part of the, you know, the flow that developers are used to and they don't have to think twice and, you know, come back and try to make changes. Uh, but I, I, that's the future. That's what, that's what that's we spend most of our time. future and hopefully making better decisions, right? right? With all the insights, right? With all the information data available. But yeah, it's just data sitting out there unless people making the right decisions. It, absolutely. I think this is where this is the biggest challenge and, uh, and we'll solve it, you know, and the industry will solve it. You know, there will be more and more innovative co companies that will keep on leveraging the data and provide recommendations and make it easy for people to take action.